This headboard belonged to my great grandparents. Dates back to about the 1920s. It has a very interesting styling, something you don't see very often anymore. It has these hammer kind of strap hinges there. It's not really not a hinge, it's more like you know the strap decoration. And it has hand painted vegetation here on the headboard itself. One of the main challenges in converting this bed frame into a bench is that this scallop sits on the top of the end of the bed. And because it's going to be a bench, you really can't have your feet hanging over onto that scallop. So my best bet is to flip it over and try to make sure that that is where the legs go. So I need to see if I can pull this apart and then flip that around. Well, I got one side off. I was able to pry that up. And you can see here that that was probably hand chiseled in, making that tenon there. They have these, which look like hand forged nails, holding it together. It's actually pretty cool. Now that I have it pulled apart, all I have to do is reverse the legs and put them back together. Okay, it looks like everything lines up. One dry fit, and I can begin cutting down the rails to make it the appropriate length for a bench. To do that, I'm gonna be cutting out the center of each side of the rail and reattaching them to make them smaller or shorter. The rails are really long. In fact, I'm gonna be cutting out most of the center material and then reattaching it. And the only reason I'm doing that is because I wanna keep the hooks on the side that attach to the foot and head of the bench. To cut out the center part, I'm going to be making two 45 degree cuts. That way when I remove the center, the two sides will fit together fairly seamlessly if the angle is correct. I have the center cut out of both rails and now I have to reattach them together. But that glue joint on that 45 degree cut isn't going to be strong enough by itself. So on the back side, I'm adding another piece that's going to help reinforce to be able to carry the weight for the bench. Now that I know that everything fits, I have to look for some material to use for the bench top. That's not quite right. Too thin. Nothing in there. Nope. Mm. No, nothing here. I don't know if I have anything that's going to work. Oh, wait. Great. Now I just have to take it all apart. With the swing set taken apart, I need to plane down all the pieces to make them smooth enough to use for the bench top. And then I have to cut down all the pieces to size and sand them down. I'm also jointing each of these pieces that are going to be on the bench top. They don't have to be perfect where there's no gap in between any of them because I do kind of like the rounded edges, but I do want them to fit pretty evenly up next to each other. I have one board that I'm using from the swing set and I'm just using pocket hole screws to attach it to the middle of the bench. Pocket holes are a pretty strong way to attach a board to a different board, especially in a perpendicular position. And it only took two screws on each side to make sure that it was secure. And that added a lot of strength after that board was there. With the center support in place, I can start arranging the boards and figure out how I'm going to be placing them on top of the bench. Before making anything permanent, I'm taking a chance to fill in the holes that were left from the bolts when it was a swing set. And I'm just using some wooden dowel to fill in those holes and then cut them off with a flush trim saw. Once that's done, I'm using the sander to make sure I knock off any residual paint and to make sure that the boards are pretty smooth to the touch. And with the sanding done, a couple light passes with a card scraper 
make sure that there's no leftover splinters that somebody might get caught on when they sit on the bench. The last thing I need to do before I attach the boards permanently to the bench top is I need to cut a notch out of the front board and that is to make sure that it clears the two posts that are sticking up from the front of the bench. And the last step in this part of the construction is to cut out a little rectangular piece on the bottom of the front board. That way it clears the bottom of the bench and will protrude past the front. It'll be a little more comfortable to sit on the bench that way. It even looks a little bit better too. For some reason the cut wasn't completely clean and I need that board to sit completely flat on the front of the bench so I'm using my chisel just to make sure I knock down anything in any high spots to eliminate any kind of rocking back and forth from the board. Now you can see how the board drops into place, those notches are cut, it clears those posts and we're ready for the final finishing. The finish on this bench is really old and I don't think I'm going to be able to match it exactly but I'm going to do my best to get close. So the boards that I cut for the bench top I'm going to be staining with a dark walnut type stain and then I'll be finishing with a polyurethane after that. I don't like using the two-in-one mix of the stain and poly so I'll have to do this in two different steps. So I'm covering my table saw and my workbench with butcher paper, taping it down and starting the finish. When working the stain, remember to wear gloves to cover your hands and wear old clothes because that stuff gets everywhere and it splatters, even if you think you're being careful with it. All that's left now is to let the stain dry and put on the final coat, and we're just about done. One last minute addition is to make use of those posts that are sticking out from the front of the bench and trim those into armrests. Those posts ended up being just at the right height for someone's arms while you're sitting on the bench. Well, the bench is all done. My parents had commissioned me to build this, but I don't know if they're getting it back now. I kind of like it here. You may not have this exact bed frame, but you can find a headboard all over town. You might even have an old one that you're looking to get rid of. Go ahead and convert it into a bench. And if you do, when you post it on social, go ahead and tag me. I'd love to see what everybody builds. So until next time, subscribe, share, and follow. See you guys next time. What? You're still here? It's over. Go already. Hit that notification bell and you'll see when the next video comes out. Take care. Daddy, who are you talking to?